What's up, everybody? This is Eric Braun, your host of the Mortgage Pro Podcast for Mortgage Pros by Mortgage Pros to make better mortgage pros. Today, we have Sean Cahan, aka the Mortgage Geek. We talk about how he built his brand, his background, transitioning from you know a solo originator to now an owner of Cornerstone Mortgage. Great, great episode. Great guy. And I know you guys are going to get a lot out of it. So please remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. We do not run any ads. This is a complete passion project, but I do want it to grow and I want to make, or we want to make a impact on the industry and make better mortgage pros. So please remember to do all that stuff and enjoy the episode. All right. We got Mr. Sean Cahan in the building. How are you? I'm doing good, man. Yeah. Thank you. For, thank you for coming on. Uh, I've been a fan of your stuff for a long time. Uh, probably stumbled across your page on Instagram. Uh, for, and for those of you who are listening right now that don't know Sean, you probably know him as the mortgage geek. Um, so I, I stumbled across your Instagram maybe like six, seven years ago. And it was probably one of the best examples of building a brand in our industry, especially at the time when nobody really had one. Yeah. Um, so I commend you for that. I thank you for being a, you know, le- leading as an example in our industry. And, uh, like I said, I appreciate you, you coming on today. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, we can, we can jump into that, but it's, it's interesting. <laughs> like I've fallen off really hard just because of like, I took a different path and, and, um, in the mortgage space, but I'm, I'm really excited that I'm jumping back into like what I really like the best, but it's, it's just interesting that the mortgage geek is like so well known still, even though I completely fucking fell off and it's all because of at the very beginning, you know, that I just pounded it when no one else was really doing it. Right. Um, I just stayed really, really consistent with it and just drove, <clears throat> you know, a lot of content. So it's interesting when you do create a brand, the legacy just can last forever, you know? Right. And uh, so it's just, and then I look back and I'm like, well, I could be way fucking bigger, you know? Uh, and if I just stayed on course, but whatever, I, I can't change, can't change what I did. And the course I took is the course I took, but. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, and then the course is obviously doing well. Um, and and we're definitely going to talk about branding and um, we're, we'll talk about all of that stuff. But before we do, why don't you give us actually, actually, hold on, we got our new segment. We got <laughs> a new segment this is the second episode that we're doing it. So how this works is I give you a you know a phrase or a place. And you give me your first knee jerk, you know, one or two word reaction. You ready? Okay. I'm in. I like this game. All right. First up, New York. Cold. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> uh, California. Surf. Uh, originators. Hardworking. Realtors. Fun to hang out their own. Okay. Uh, FHA. Fabulous. Non-QM. The best. It's another good one. One last one. Let's do your California guy. Lakers. I don't know shit about basketball. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> All right. So I, 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 this, I actually stole this from another podcast that I listened to, and uh, I think it's a cool way to jump things off. Um, it makes for good content, so I appreciate you playing along. So, yeah. like I was saying, uh, talk before we get into brand, the mortgage geek, how it all started. Why don't you give us a quick background on yourself, where you grew up, where you're from, how'd you get in the business? Yeah. Um, I'll make it quick too. So Washington stays where I grew up and went to high school, you know, like every other normal kid got into college, not the smartest cat on the planet for sure. Like, um, whatever. I just not, I've always been like a really hard working individual. So I started my first like 
I was selling like, uh, you know, car, car parts back in 17, when I was 17 years old. And so I became like a middleman and, and then I actually did pretty well at that. And then I started another company. I was 19 and then it's called steam pot pressure washing. And so I was like literally going door to door pressure washing. I got enough money to drive around a van. It was cool when I was 19, you know, um, came down to Cali after I graduated. Cause my dad was like, yo, you have to graduate. Cause I went, I went to four and a half years, year round school. Like I went to all summer schools and then back and, oh, wow. um, and then I ended up in California on vacation three weeks after I graduated with a couple of buddies, I went out on Garnett one night and I was like, this gotta be the spot. So the next day I signed a lease, no job, no nothing. Dude, I was, I didn't have two pennies to rub together and uh, drove down, slept on the carpet, sold fake perfume out of a backpack. Um, and then like three months into it, my dad's like, Hey, you gotta get an actual job, man. You can't just be hanging on the beach bumming. And, um, so I, I got picked up in the mortgage space. And then ever since that time, I was like, well, this works. I'm, uh, I was never really good in school besides math, right? So mathematics becomes really easy for my brain. Not, you know, I can't write a fucking sentence really that well. Um, but really math means, means a lot to me. And then also just the care for other people, really. That's just all it is, being ethical and, and going above and beyond. Um, and so, May 12th of 2004 is when I jumped into the to to the industry. Um, I still live like a mile away from where I actually started my roots in California. Wow. And um, I call myself a PB rat. But um, just because it's like the Pacific Beach, we surf, we still skate, we you know, and but there's like a place called La Jolla where it's a, it's a little bit more upscale. So that's where my house is. But I still call <laughs> myself you... a PB and my wife's like, no, we live in the Hoya. And I'm like, I live in PB. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, it's, it's funny you bring up skating and your first business, because as you were as you were uh, talking about, you know, power, your, your first business as power washing. Well, clear, clearly, first off, you're, you're a hustler, which like that's it. one thing about this industry, the people who are successful are hustlers. It, there's no secret to it. It's it's a lot of work. It's a grind. So uh, my first business growing up, uh, I would I skateboarded. So I would go around and buy used skateboards from my people that I would skate with, and I would paint them up and like do cool graphics and designs and stuff like that, and, yeah. resell, and resell them. Now, what, what year? What year you were born? I was born in 1995. So, okay. all I'm, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm 28. This was probably now. This is like elementary school. Like, yeah, so uh, I was gonna say that was really popular, dude. That that's hot. Like back in like the Brooklyn and New York and all that kind of stuff. That was yeah. a very that was cool. Now, yeah. don't get me wrong. This was not a successful business at it all. Doesn't matter. It was in, the grind. In fact, in fact, I lost. <laughs> money. Um, but I just found it really cool to like. It, it was something that I obviously took interest in. Yeah. And uh, one thing about me, when I take interest into something, I get completely obsessed, completely obsessed. My whole life becomes it. And then that's, you know, it's led to bad things in my life, but it's also done me well. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I'll, so I, I just took interest into skateboarding. Obviously I was always at the skate park and the people I hung around with, the way that I dressed, everything was that. Um, and I figured, you know, let me fix up skateboards. I would sand them down with sandpaper, paint them and try and resell them. Now, I only so ever resold one. Most of them just stayed in the in the collection, but uh <laughs> but it, it was it was cool nonetheless. So I I share that early entrepreneurial whether it was successful or not, not 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 important like you said, but I share that with you as well. And now you so you got in the business in 2004. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Talk about those times for a little bit for the people who are listening that were in the business then so that they can reminisce and for the people like me who weren't in the business yet so that we you know we can hear about what it was like in uh your experience. Yeah, I mean learning more about back then is is actually pretty fascinating. You know, I thought I thought that I was doing well, which I was, but like 
I was so new into the industry at that time that I was like kind of like on the bottom bottom level, but I grinded. I, I, I care about other individuals. Math really made sense. I just told my mentor, I was like, hey, just teach me the, the teach me the basics. And I still it's interesting is like if you even look back then, like a full doc loan and how you calculate income and how you, you know, kind of put a file together, it's still relatively the same, right? It was just different back then because like we didn't have so many rules and regulations, but I, it, it kind of formatted me to be a little bit more successful after the turn because I was more of that guy that like wanted everything to be like the same and the less shopping and to kind of, you know, a little bit more knowledge, not just kind of like, you know, the dirt that's out there. And so right. that kind of fit with my style a little bit better. Um, but dude, 2004, five, six, seven. I mean, if you were grinding, you were doing well. And I quickly went up the actual chain pretty quick just because I was that guy that, yeah, I would make, you know, one month, being only 24 years old, you know, and, and scrape or 25 and scraping like, you know, 70 or 100 grand in a month and all that kind of stuff. Like, dude, that was a lot of scratch, you know? And, but it didn't stop me from coming into work the next day compared to a lot of the kids out there, they would get like a paycheck for a hundred grand and they would disappear for four weeks. And I was always like, just because I got t money today, I didn't have money in the, before. So I'm just gonna go put it in my bank and I'm just gonna, you know, continue grinding. So that was a big difference. Um, and then the mortgage crash and whatever the crash allowed me to kind of reposition and be like, hey, I can't be in refinance. I gotta be in purchase money transactions and how am I gonna do this? So then, you know, I connected with a real estate agent, became the in-house lender um, in 2009. So that, you know, kind of got me into the purchase money, more transactions, kept on, you know, meeting realtors, pounding the streets and really focused on that. And that's what kind of carried me through, you know? So I've never leapfrog anybody. I've done every single position. I will continue doing every single position. It's just now almost 20 years later, I had the opportunity that um, I own Cornerstone. Um, we're in 48 states. I, I grind still, so I'll still produce over 100 million this year. And I just was, got back from a 10 day road trip of meeting new branches, meeting new loan officers. And man, I just, I'm never gonna stop. That's just who I am. So yeah, right. that's the difference. And, and your love, your love for the game shows. I, I relate to it. I, uh, it's, it's, this business is absolutely brutal. As, as it's fucking monopoly. <laughs> I, I was, I'm, I'm, you know, late setting up this call with you because I'm on the phone with a client who we locked before rates dropped and now they're scheduled to close and they're hearing that rate. So like the emotional, <laughs> and that's just like one phone call. I don't even mean to like, overinflate that it wasn't even that bad but that that on top of the problems with the files like you have to love this shit you yeah have to love this shit in For order sure. to, to do it this long so uh i respect that and i i relate with that as well um so you 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 spoke about transitioning from you know subprime slash refi slash everything that comes with that business model to purchase relationship yeah. driven business right i think everybody no matter if you were relationship and purchase money uh before rates went up or if you were a refi guy before rates went up everybody's shifting and putting a huge emphasis on building referral relationships because we all realize that if I have more referral relationships, I do more deals. And now, because of the amount of transactions being less that are out there, I need more referral relationships than I used to. So I think everybody's in that grind mode of going out there and build, or, or they should be at least. Uh, well, if you going, don't, you're not in the business. Right, right, exactly. So, but I, I want to I wanna help somebody that's listening right now that is like... I, I I know I need referral partners. I know I need to build those relationships, but how? Yeah. Why don't you speak thing. to how you let's let's talk about how you secured that first in-house relationship, maybe, and then you can you know go off on whatever direction we 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 want to go in. Well, the how is how the how is everything, right? It's uh, kind of strategizing, sitting down. Like I actually flew to um, New York to go meet my boy Mario the Monk. I'm, maybe people know him too. And shout out to Mario. I gotta, I gotta have him on. That's actually, I'm gonna write that down. Yeah. 
try to tell him to shower up and to and to look a little bit better than normal. You know, <laughs> you want him on your call. That guy, he's gotta, he's gotta trim up a little bit. But that's fine, Mario. I love you. Um, but uh, it's it's the how. Like, so there's a bunch of different coaching programs. There's a lot of different you know ideas out there and. Here's the main problem with everybody in the industry being a coach and to a leader or anything like that. They always they always like to tell you, you know, and to tell you what you need to be doing, but they don't show you how to do it. It's like, Eric, you know, you got to be on social media. It's like, OK, cool. How? I don't know. Call this person. It's like, no. OK, are you going to teach me how to be a videographer? You know, where do I go? How do I edit? You know, and they spend so much time, but then you're like, wait a second, I'm a mortgage person. I'm not a creator, you know? So it's hard to figure that out. It's the how piece. It's how to get on social media. How you get a lot of referral partners is simple. Use a platform that everyone is on. Wow, social media, okay? You know, right. hey, I want to boycott social media. Well, okay, do that personally. Who gives a shit, you know? I don't I don't post anything personal, but I'm on social media quite a bit on my business side, right? Right. Create relationships. I always say to everybody that's joining, um, social media has created like the best platform in the world to have the best relationships because Man, I got a fucking whack ass high pitched voice. Okay. And so like if you know, back in the old day when I was just banging the phones, dude, you know that realistically people like are attracted to or not attracted to and if all you have is your voice, they might never call me back just because of my voice, right? They don't even give me the opportunity. So now I get to go on, I get to see what people are all about, right? Do I relate to this person? Am I gonna be able to like connect with this person? And business is like outside of what you should be really focusing on and then start communicating with them, you know? And then when they communicate back, then they can check you out behind the scenes and it's not fucking awkward. Right. Um, and then you can create a relationship before actually meeting in person. and. I think that's why social media is so powerful that you should be utilizing it for the purpose that it's of your business, not just utilizing it to go show people that, that how cool you are. You know what I mean? And well, uh, it's, it's in the word, right? Social media. Yeah. And it's, I think there's a ton of people that put out media, but aren't social and vice versa. And, and it's, it's a combination of the two, right? So you're a shining example of producing content, building that brand, putting in that, that, that building that equity, right? With people. And then what you're saying now is you're using that, that asset that you've been building to develop real connections with people. Absolutely. And it's a matter, it's just a matter of creating conversation and outreach. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's everyone it's, watching this show. That's obviously boiling it down to its very simple form, but go ahead. Yeah, no, no, I like this. And I didn't mean to cut you off. I just had something pop in my brain. I was like, wait, okay, so everyone watching and listening to this right now, everyone should should go in and learn as much as you can about social media. Go watch is like the social experiment, right? Isn't that what's called social experiment, that one movie? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, go and watch that. Go and go and listen to what they're saying and how it's actually designed. And and that's what I liked about it so much is learning. So then I was like, wait a second, this is designed to create relationships and designed to to help individuals connect when they've never connected before. And, you know, be the first person to like and comment on someone's page. Not only does it, you know, you get rewards from it, from the actual platform itself, but the individual that you're liking and commenting, the reason why they post it is because they're looking for the third party validator. So be the third party validator, you right. know, right. And then just, kind just, of build it from there. So you'd be surprised how, how much just saying congratulations on somebody's post does for them. Like it's, it's, and, and it's, and it's so easy. Yeah. So easy. It's, it's very free. 
Um, well, that's the thing is they post too much content, and then they don't do the work of the content. Like I would rather post less content and more and more relationships and commenting and liking and and reposting and sharing than actually posting the content itself. You know, like one of the most successful realtors in the country, they only post now like three times a week, right? People are like, oh my gosh, you should be doing more posts. He's like, wait a second, no, 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 no. I'm posting what I post where you actually get an ROI is through sharing and liking and creating the relationships. And so they use the whole entire validation purpose of the, of the platform. And now they're considered to be one of the largest realtors in the country. So it's like, there we go. There's proof from the fucking pudding right there. You know? That's, that's so it's such a big, it's such a huge point because, you know, you have a ton of marketers, business personalities that have been preaching the you got to post four times a day, uh, every single day, if you want to be successful. And there's obviously truth to that. There, there's, yeah. there's power in frequency and volume, but there's way more power, at least in our business, in connection and conversations and relationships. Now, more content leads to more of those things, but if you're just doing more content, and you're not doing those other things. You're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to get anywhere. I and and to to be honest, I've I've been on social media for you know I've been in the business almost nine years, and I've been on social media basically since the beginning of my career. I started out as a telemarketer, like like yourself. I was hitting the phones during the harp and streamline days. Nice. And uh, you know, once I actually was like, all right, let me get my license. Let me let me take stuff seriously. Uh, I, I started social media and that was shortly after, but I've been on social media for a good amount of time and I've only had maybe 10 completely cold customers reach out to me. Only 10, right? And I think what people are trying, like, there's, there's, I think there's two ways to build social media in our business. Number one is you go consumer direct, you make educational stuff and you try to bring in leads, like straight up borrowers. The other side, and my, maybe, maybe one way, I, I don't want to make the argument that one way is more fruitful than the other, but what I prefer and what I've actually, my content is better geared towards. And, and I like talking about stuff uh, in, in this realm a little bit more is more geared towards the other side of it is building referral relationships. So like you got the, how to buy, how to buy a house in three steps. And then you have the, what realtors should be doing to grow their business sort of content. Right. And I've always looked at social media as a way of building relationships, not a way of getting customers. And, and, you know, I've kind of, you know, mixed together a bunch of points there, but that is a, a huge part of my success personally is I just focus on, I focused on relationships, conversations, and, and what's, what I always teach my guys and girls is the reason you put out content is to start conversation. When somebody likes your post, when somebody comments in your post, when somebody shares your post, they're, they're coming into your space. And when they come into your space, they're inviting a conversation to take place. And I think that is a lost art in our business in general. Everybody's just waiting for the phone to ring. Everybody's yeah. just waiting for the phone to ring. They're not going out there and being, being a connector, being like working. And, 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 you know, you just said you took a, a road trip driving around, trying to make stuff happen, sitting down with people. Like if you're not doing that, you're missing out. You're missing out. So I think uh, th there's so much, there's so much to unpack there. Uh, I, I do want to talk about your brand specifically um, and how that came about. I'm sure you get that question all the time. I know I get that question all the time. Give us the, the story of the mortgage geek. Um, I mean, it's pretty simple. So I went to a studio and it was right when like, you know, filming and, and posting is the very beginning, 2017, right? That's when our industry finally attracted to it. And this, and this cool cat, Derek Evans, um, he's big on YouTube still. And he was like, um, 
it was like, hey, come into my studio, and there's a bunch of realtors, and a bunch of loan officers there, and I was there, and every single week, and I'm like, wow, this this is cool. So like, I I don't know, I got a little bit of confidence in me, so I just walked out to him a little bit later, and I was like, hey, um, dude, this is amazing. I th- I think that there's a lot of longevity to this. I just don't want all these other competitors around here. And he's like, well, that's cool, thanks. Um, and so I was like, no, 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 can we make a deal where I just don't want any of these other LLs in here? And I, I just want to be the only one. So I don't know, maybe I do, I buy your studio or become partners with you. And he's like, yeah, man, that's not how I work. And then I just kept on grinding and grinding and grinding. And then finally I, I we, we struck a deal. So then I was like, this is amazing. Cool. All lenders you're out and I'm the only one in there. So then I was <laughs> kind of fucked up, but I did it. And then I was driving and then I was with um, Blair at the time and, and she was on the, uh, you know, she just started with us and she was on my team. Um, and then she was big, big, huge inspiration and, and a lot of the creator of, of the Mortgage Geek. And we were driving to the new studio to come up with like our first video ever. And literally this is how the Mortgage Geek came about. She was like, well, what, what should we call you? And I'm like, I don't know this. You know, I did a radio and ESPN. They said, you're the mortgage geek because I knew a lot of answers. So then she's like, oh my God, that's cool. So we get there and then she's like, wait, put on my glasses. So I used her glasses. I couldn't even see through the lens because like she was blind. <laughs> and then the first shot of the video, then she went over and tore a piece of paper out of the lined paper, put it in the middle of the glasses and taped it. And that's literally how the mortgage geek wow. came about. Wow. That's... Yeah. And then we shot our first video that way. And then my first video is funny. It was about bank statement loans in 2015. That's great. I, yeah. I, you know what I noticed? Um, now, now looking back at it, I think what you had at the time that not many people were bringing to the table is like a high level of production. And it make now it makes sense with the studio. Like people weren't doing skits and like professional, you know, not that this... It, it matters a little less now, but at the time it, you, it made you stand out. Like it was like actual, like filmed and edited video. Correct. Like yeah, yeah, together. Yeah. it looked, it looked yeah. directed. It looked, you know, high quality resolution and stuff, but also just like the structuring of the video and the storytelling and, and the props. Like, I think there's definitely still a place for that stuff. Uh, but that I think is one thing looking back like i remember seeing your videos like wow this guy's doing like whole skits and stuff it's not just like uh you know he's going live on on instagram he's like do he's like producing cool cool funny especially funny is another reason you stand out yeah uh, stuff so i i commend you for that because it takes investment right like uh, i i people are like, you know, I want to do social media and and I want to build this brand and this, that, and the third, like, I couldn't tell you how much I spent on building my brand. I couldn't tell you it would, it would be a a large, you know, I spent, I spent money to learn how to public speak. I spent, you know, I had a full-time videographer that I would pay. uh, It was a salaried employee. I bought studio time. I, obviously through events and and pay for re recap videos and promo videos. And like, I think it's a, it's a level of commitment. It's not, it's not the more you spend, the more, the more you get. Uh, but I think the level of commitment shows. Yeah. Uh, and, and you obviously committed at the time. Now you did mention when we first, when we first started the conversation that you took some time off, you pulled back. Why don't you go into that a little bit? I mean, sometimes in, in life, you got to make like a little adjustments to where you are and, and uh, you know, being the owner of an IMB and then started, you know, in 2015, I became the delegated underwriter for all non-QM. In 2016, I became an agency seller. So it was, it was kind of like, in, I you know, if you talk to Mario about it too, because Mario was, you know, his biggest client for a couple of years. And um, it was like, where, where do I grow my business? You know what I mean? Do I continue growing my business as just being an originator, but I have this platform and, I, and I'm a younger in, individual on the, on the IMB side. And so I had to 
shoes and so while maintaining my volume and and you know dealing with all the clients and all that kind of stuff but i also had to go in the direction that i wanted to build a larger imb fully transparent and so now it's really really fun um i got 253 loan officers today with actually 90 that more that are uh joining and so you know having like a platform of, of being able to make a difference in all those in all those individuals lives and also producing mortgages i had to pick and choose which one was going to kind of fall off a little bit but i still feel that it's so important to be an expert in your field and, and to continue driving from uh you know like a doer and so i was like well i can't give up doing loans to and but i have to continue you know getting the word out there that they can join and, and you know there's no you know, separation, they get a full transparent rate sheet and they get all the best products all in one system, right? So it's like, that was my new quest. So I had to fall off a little bit. Right. Now I'm able to, now I've been able to hire enough people and to um, kind of free up a little bit more time. And now I get to jump back into the studio again. That's truly my passion and kind of make a run at that without giving up the other, you know, uh, items that I'm doing. So that's it's, why. it's seasons seasons there's different there's definitely different seasons in, in business and life in general your priorities change your goal changes your vision changes and sometimes like i you know the last time i quote unquote fell off social media was when the platform changed yeah you, you redo my strategy because it went from you know i i was on instagram when it was just pictures like yeah. my, my first content strategy was I hired, a, again, investment. I hired a, ph a photographer that I would meet with quarterly. I would bring five outfits and we just go to different places and take pictures and change outfits. And then I would write captions. Yeah. That was my first social media strategy. Then it shifted to more long form content. So I would do like seven minute IGTV videos, educational stuff. Then it switched to vlogs. Then the short form wave. Right. And when, when I'm not going to lie, when, when they, when that last uh, change or transition came into play with social media, I was pissed because I just nailed down my, my social media strategy to match the current platform. And then they just flipped it on me. And that style of content, the short form content, I was not used to creating. Like I, well, it's a I, way, it's a way different filming. You know what I mean? It's a completely different script basis. It's completely crazy. different. Yeah. It's different subject matter, different style. It's different editing. It's different. Everything editing. is different. Yeah. It's, it's completely well, cause different. it's shot into a reel, right? And what it is, is that the consumer itself is the one that's driving that. Yeah. And you know, the long form came out and then it fell off real hard um, right. because the consumer just doesn't have that attention span of looking at it. it's like you know and that's why i like those those thumbnails were so important you know the film but i didn't even take it like continue no 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 they, you, you hit it right on the head that's like it was so that was my last season where i like completely pulled back for like a few months almost like depressed like mother you know motherfucker like i i i just cracked i just cracked it i had a full-time videographer at the time and now all of a sudden I got to tell him no more vlogs and no more long form stuff. And yeah, that podcast that we were planning on starting, which is this one, postpone that because it's not a priority right now. I got to jump on the short form. Way. Like how do yeah. I make reels? Um, and it's, it's a, it's a never ending uh, pursuit, but uh, I, I completely get the, the, the seasonality. And then I also relate and I just put up a story the other day about it. Uh, I need to do a better job on documenting the journey and making content that about what we, what we are doing on a larger scale, not just my personal business and to, and, and, and to promote my, my, me personally, like we have a, I have a division of 50 people we have a division of 50 people and I don't talk about it a lot and we're looking to grow that. And we have a vision to change the industry much like yourself. Uh, so it just, I get the, the pivots and, and I, I hear what you're saying 100%, but um, I, 
look up to the fact that, uh, you know, you've been doing this for a while and I look up to your brand and it was one of those examples early on for me in the beginning. So I know a lot of people got a lot out of what we talked about today. Um, I just, I just want to say thank you. Yeah, man. No, I, I really appreciate you having me on. And, and I love these, like, this is more of like a strategy session, you know what I mean? And that's why I like, like a podcast that has a direction and a podcast that has interaction, right, is, is super important. And I think that this one fulfilled a lot of um, education to the people that are listening about how do you do those? Because the, the how is always missing. And, and here's where I would say that the how and to kind of sum up the conversation is that realistically, that communication and connectivity is more important than actual content itself, but you have to have the content for the connection to come back and see what you're all about, right? So content's important, connection is everything, right? So that'd be like your foundation and then kind of move on from there. But um, yeah, it was cool. I, I really appreciate you having me on and I wish that we could sit here, but I'm, I'm actually starting a new podcast. Love you to come on it. Love um, it. It's called it's called Leave Us Alone, actually. So, All right. yeah. So I'll, I'll be pushing that my new content in the beginning of the new year. So hopefully you'll come on and and uh, it's a little bit more of a long form. It's an hour long podcast, you know, but it's gonna be fun topics for sure. So. All right, cool. I'm I'm completely down with that. I appreciate your time, brother, and and thank you again. Yeah, thanks, Eric. Um, I wish you the best. I wish I saw you. So next time I'm in New York, I'll be in New York. Hit me up. Um, I'll, I'll give you a shout. I got the I got the key to Williamsburg, <laughs> so, so you, you'll have a good time. But uh, I'll talk. I'm to in. You. Peace.